Howdy folks. So at my work we were looking for uh, a sort of inexpensive RS-485 transceiver um, that was not made by FTDI. We've been having some USB issues uh, on Linux and we wanted to sort of see if we could get something by uh, like Silicon Labs or something uh, or Prolific or something and uh, we wanted it to be uh, relatively inexpensive because we needed to buy a couple of them so we uh, eventually came across uh, these things on eBay and they were like four dollars each so we bought a couple just to see um, you know what they were like and they were so inexpensive that uh, we really didn't uh, need to have any serious expectations for them and so they came in a few days ago and I did some initial testing and uh, I just wanted to sort of uh, put this information out there because there's really not a lot of information about these uh, converters. These are really generic. They pretty much only say winners on the back and uh, that doesn't even seem to be used in any of the eBay listings. Uh, there's basically a whole bunch of eBay listings and they're all um, basically the same. Uh, it's like someone wrote one and just everyone copies and pastes you know, the same information. So there's really not that much data outside of those eBay listings on these. Uh, and so I thought I'd uh, fill people in if anyone is interested uh, or in buying these or maybe has already ordered one of these. Um, and so these things, the reason why I, I picked this over all of the other, you know, various types of converters uh, is because this thing supports more than just RS-485. So it actually has um, TTL serial which is adjustable in voltage uh, with this jumper here between 3.3 volts and 5 volts. So you can do two different signal levels of TTL serial over this header. Uh, it also has RS-232 out this header and RS-485 out this header. Um, and you can adjust that with uh, this switch here. So basically you have your, your voltage set here which adjusts uh, the TTL. So you've got ground, uh, RX, TX, and VCC. And then uh, you can switch this between TTL and RS and when it's on RS, you get RS-232 out this. Um, and again, it's just your RX-TX. There's no other control lines. And then RS-485, uh, you just have two pins, which is, of course, they're labeled A and B, and that's the differential output. And that was what we were interested in. And uh, so this thing, it runs the Silicon Labs um, CP2102, which is uh, apparently a very nice uh, USB to UART converter chip. And then for the transceivers, um, for the RS-232, it's a, a, a Cypex uh, SP3232EE, and uh, for the RS-485, they've gone with another Cypex part. Uh, it's an SP485EE. And uh, so, I mean, from, from the sort of the data that was available and sort of what I could read through the pictures on the, the listing, this looked like a, a decent part. You know, you've got the switches, you've got uh, two red LEDs for your RX and TX and a blue power light. And uh, I, I, we bought a couple of these just because, you know, we, we didn't want to wait for shipping if they did turn out to be good. Uh, and the quality is pretty good. Of course, they're all, all the through-hole stuff is hand-soldered, but it's, it's at least well done. Um, and all the service mount stuff looks really nice. So anyway, on to how well do these things work. Well, the, uh, the RS-232 and the TTL both work great. Um, as you'd expect, it's pretty hard to kind of screw that stuff up. But of course, there is, of course, there's no, there's no hardware flow control. So there's no, you know, RTS, DTS. Um, there's none of those uh, types of signals. So it's, it's not one of the sort of, you know, more fancy uh, um, types of RS-232. So you, you really just, you know, there's no flow control offered by this. But, you know, that's okay for most things. If you're going to talk to, like an Arduino or some, you know, embedded thing, it probably doesn't have hardware flow control on it anyway. So that's really okay. But the RS-485 is sort of the interesting one, and that's what, that's what I immediately wanted to test because that's what we're using. Um, we basically need to uh, sort of stress test a product. And uh, unfortunately, we, we're using these FTDI cables. FTDI makes an RS-485 cable. Um, it's basically, they've got a transceiver and one of their chips in it. And uh, the transceiver doesn't seem to like to switch on and off um, at, at high speed, and it causes us problems. So we wanted to see if we could find somebody else with a different transceiver that did, you know, worked a little differently. And uh, anyway, this is not going to be that product, and it's because uh, I tried to use this and it didn't work. I sort of, I would get weird garbled characters um, at the beginning of transactions and things. We're using Modbus uh, RTU over RS-485, and we would get, uh, basically everything that came back would be malformed. It was very, very strange. And so I, I ended up scoping the bus, and then I ended up actually reverse engineering how they're driving this transceiver. And that's when I discovered the sort of the horrors of how they'd wired this. And what I was kind of intrigued about was uh, how they were telling this transceiver to um, switch between transmit and receive. Because, of course, RS-485 is 
a differential signal, right? You have A and B, which is sort of D plus and D minus. And so it's a, by nature, it's a half duplex uh, signal, right? You can only either transmit or receive at a time. And so the transceiver needs to know, um, am I supposed to be receiving or am I supposed to be transmitting? And then what am I transmitting? And so you can't do that with just an RX and a TX pin, right? You need an enable pin, which switches it between receive and transmit. And I wanted to know how they were doing that on this board. Sort of the, the convention that I've seen in a lot of these converters, it's not an official standard by any means, but what I've seen a lot of is they use the RTS um, signal, the ready to send signal, or the, not ready to send, um, they, they use RTS to enable the transmitter. And anyway, uh, I could not find that signal on this chip at all. And so the way that they've done this, uh, maybe I'll inset a picture of the truth table um, for the inputs for this part, of course it's just a, a couple pins. Basically, they've actually hard uh, shunted the data input uh, on this chip to ground, and they've also shunted out the, uh, the receive enable uh, to ground, which is in, it's, a, it's, an, it's a, an active low signal, so it's always receiving and the data input is ground, and then the data enable, um, they set that to the transmit input. And so basically, this chip only transmits a mark. It never transmits a space. And so basically, by toggling that pin, they are effectively either driving a mark or they're driving high Z into this. And they're relying on the resistors the pull-up resistors to generate the space condition. And so if you actually look at this under a scope, the waveforms are really sharp on one edge and they're really shitty on the other edge. And um, it also causes the line to float, of course, because of the pull-up that floats to sort of an improper level. And the idle, the idle space signal, you don't get um, on this. And so when you connect this to a proper RS-485 transceiver, um, it sort of, the actual, the transmit light or the receive light actually gets stuck on because it, it thinks it's receiving something, but it's not. Uh, it's just the way they've wired this and it's kind of horrible. And so anyway, you could technically fix this by putting a mod wire between the pad on this chip and uh, sort of, you know, lifting the two, the, um, the data enable and the data input and then, you know, connecting the data input to the TX and connecting RTS into the, um, the uh, data enable and you know then you could write get some software to use the RTS to you know uh, use this as a proper RS-485 transceiver but the way it's wired right now they can communicate amongst themselves like uh, we bought a couple of these and we can connect them together and they can talk to each other um, so they, they seem to be okay there but talking to an actual proper device um, it seems to have issues um, it's mostly the receive. It seems to be able to transmit okay. At least the device we're talking to seems to be able to figure out what's going on, but it, it does not receive stuff properly. So um, that's, that's all I really wanted to say um, about these things. Just if you're, you know, if you just need it for, for, for TTL um, or RS-232 with no control signals, it's a perfectly fine device. Uh, but just, I would say pretty much ignore the RS-485 because it is not... It's not up to snuff. They have not wired this the way I, I expected it to be wired. And so it's really, I mean, yeah, technically you don't need any special driver support to know that it's an RS-485 device uh, and, you know, to sort of do that, R, that you know, RTS hack to get the transceiver to work, uh, which is nice. But, you know, if nothing can talk to this, then I don't really know what the point is. And I also don't know how, how, it, would, how it would affect long cable runs uh, having those pull-up resistors. Because I don't know, uh, I don't know how fast you'd be able to get this thing to go. Um, I, I tried this thing up to four megabaud with a very short cable, and it it, it actually was okay um, with short bursts of traffic. I didn't really, I didn't like try to kermit a file or something over this. I didn't have time. But anyway, um, this video does not need to be this long. That's uh, all I wanted to do was just put that information out there in case anyone comes across these. You know, they are cheap. They're like four dollars. So I mean. For, for what you get, just ignore the RS-485, and it's, it's an okay device. So, anyway, that's all I wanted to say. So, as always, thanks for watching.